this is a column base plate sitting right on top of this massive rebar support system that's inside this concrete column. Now, this massive rebar support system is tied into a massive rebar support system or cage that's inside this humongous concrete block that's down here. All this together is called the column footing. Welcome back to the set of Can We Build a House in Costa Rica in 90 Days or Less. This is day 29, and today we're talking about the column base plate, why they're so important, what is their role, and why this whole system here, the column footing, is the most important thing you need to do when building a house in Costa Rica. If done right with the right team, you'll never have to worry about your house sliding off the mountain, ever moving, and so the numerous earthquakes that Costa Rica gets, if your house is built right, you'll be able to live safe and secure on these awesome column footings. Let's build these column plates. We started out by cutting these large threaded rods to the correct length. We then screwed these onto the column base plates. This gives us the legs to secure these base plates inside the cement. Assembling these is pretty easy and it goes fairly quickly. As you can see, we screw on a huge nut and washer to the bottom and one on the top. While we're assembling the column base plates, our crew is pumping the rainwater out of the foundation footings. You definitely need a good water pump during the rainy season of Costa Rica. Make sure to clean your base plates to remove any surface rust and then it's time to paint them. After the paint is dry, we can install these column base plates on each of the column foundations. So let's talk about our columns and the importance of what these columns are doing. As you know, right here I'm standing on a humongous column footing. So this column footing supports and helps distribute the weight of the entire house with these column rebarb enforcements. Now these column rebarb enforcements go all the way to the bottom of our cement and they tie in to the rebarb reinforcement inside that cement. This gives this column really solid stability, okay? Now, we created these column plates just a few minutes ago and these column plates are extremely strong, but what is the purpose of these column plates? Well, first, let me back up a little bit. We'll actually take these forms put it around the columns. We'll pour cement into it. When it's full, we'll take these plates and drop it all the way down. And this way, these plates are locked into this cement. What's really important is that this is level. And if you take it our level, our level is right on the money, vertically and horizontally. So our contractor has done a fabulous job of making sure that our column supports are perfect. Now, once this is poured, all of this is interlocked and tight, and so we have a column here and a column here that is holding up the center portion of this house. Now, once this is done, this is where our col column stops, but then we'll have some really massive I-beams, and those I-beams will go right here. It will be welded to this base, and this I-beam will go way on up, which is what's going to help support the rest of this house. So you're going to see I-beams on all of these column supports after the cement is thoroughly dried. But it's really important to have these plates on top so that it supports. Now what's important to note is that these plates rest on these massive rebarb supports. So we've got these six huge rebarbs and what's actually happening is that all of the weight of the house is setting on top of this plate, which then distributes the weight through these six rebarbs down through this massive rebarb support system in the concrete. This way you don't have all of your weight in one spot. It actually redistributes all of that weight throughout all of this footing, which really keeps your house extremely stable. What we saw in this house that we tore down is that they had nowhere near the correct footing and they didn't have their columns tied into that footing properly at all. And when the tractor pushed it over, it just fell right over. It was not tied together properly at all. So you do want to be careful that you don't make the mistake 
of hiring a contractor that does not have the experience in order to do this properly. This contractor knows what he's doing, and look, a level will definitely tell you, does he know what he's doing? Because you put that level on there, it's perfect. This guy's got experience. You want to make sure that you hire the right guy for the right job. Before it was time to pour our cement, we made sure that all of the column base plates were in the correct place according to the architect's plans. Our builder established some markers with nails in the side of the forms, as you can see. This way, after he put the column base plates into the cement, he'll know exactly where they belong without having to utilize any of the strings when things get moved. The crew dug out some footings, and as you can see, now every column footing is going to be connected together with a rebarb support system and cement. And now, it's time for the cement. While it doesn't take long to pump this cement, it's all hands on deck. Everyone is working together to get all of our columns filled as quickly as we can, get those column base plates in the right position. After our column foundations are poured, we moved on to the column support system in our huge retaining wall and storage space for the garage below the house. Then we filled cement into the footings that connect all the column footings together, making this one huge rebar and cement support foundation system for our house in Costa Rica. By the next morning, everything was looking great. It's time to start the next phase of this project, so make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos for this new series where we build a house in Costa Rica.